Welcome back to my channel. Right now, I am sitting in front of the one of the most iconic buildings in Madrid, uh, the Metropolis. I'm sure you have seen somewhere on a postcard or something. And behind me, there is the Centro Centro Art Center, or to be more accurate, um, Cultural Center Complex, because behind it, uh, that is where the Feria de Arte, Art Madrid Art Fair is being hosted right now and actually it just opened its doors like half hour ago and the opening inauguration is in an hour and a half so I decided to go hunt around have some late breakfast and take you guys outside to see the blue skies and in the next three days there are four openings and um, they are the uh, Art Madrid of course right now I'm going to show you the drawing room and the hybrid art fair and urbanity as well and I'm going to all of them one by one and in the next few days you might see the notifications popping up that's my video so click on them thank you and let's go Now I'm sitting at the cafe of the Circular de Bellas Arte and I just can't believe the price. I mean, this is what I love about Spain. It's really, really reasonably priced. <laughs> about the dynamic range of this Osmo pocket. I just went out of the uh, Art Madrid Art Fair and right now I'm in front of the drawing room and drawing room just opened at 6 p.m. and I went out of the uh, Art Madrid around 4 so I stayed in there for like a good 3-4 hours and it's really really exhausting uh, but it was good uh, before going into the drawing room I just want to quickly tell you my impressions uh, so that I don't you know mess up the two fairs because I have two openings today so the first impression was that it's really really well organized because when I went and then there's a security guard telling me to wait behind the lines to keep a distance then I have to sanitize my hand and after the security check uh, there are several lines for different uh, purposes like to buy tickets 
ticket, uh, for already purchased tickets, or for media. And in fact, that Art Madrid was the only art fair that didn't invite me. Other art fairs I have already the pass. So I bought my own ticket. So they scanned my ticket without any problem, everything without contact keeping a really reasonable distance and I went inside everybody was wearing masks I'm not wearing because now I'm you know in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in a little corner but I wear a mask the whole time and also I have a sun tan like you see that I'm darker than this morning not because I put an ND filter or anything because the Galleria de Cristal is so crystal like there's sun coming through the ceiling just like the name indicates usually uh, the fair should open the end of February the beginning of March and because of the pandemic it's postponed to the end of May and that's another reason that is so sunny and maybe that's another reason that I had this impression that it's extra spacious it's extra clean and it's just a very nice place to be uh, in an indoor exhibition getting sun tan you know how cool is that so we're in Madrid you know the sunny uh, cultural capital of Europe and it's a privilege to be here in the end of my turn, someone stopped me and said, Hey, Mo! And I was like, wait, Pablo uh, is an artist friend and I had a chat with him and I was like, didn't you have this impression that this year there is like some sort of a theme that is the sea, the beach, like a summery kind of theme? And he's like, yeah, totally. Because a lot of people have been locked up in their homes, in their small apartments, and now it's the summer. They want to see sunny, happy-go-lucky kind of art, and it's adapting to the market demand. And it's not a criticism at all. And I think, by all means, if this is something you're comfortable doing, comfortable presenting, why not? There's nothing wrong with selling some you know very sunny and very colorful very pleasant beach and piscine you know it's it's totally cool i'm okay with that and i was chatting with him and he had artworks that are like light boxes and because it's so sunny uh, we couldn't really see the light and it's a pity i hope when the sun sets and they throw like a night party and hopefully his work can really shine and then he was like oh come and see my friend ruben he did one of these works you mentioned, like the beach, the sea, and the series called The Swimmers. You should totally talk to him. So I went to talk to him and he's really cool. And he explained to me what he did uh, during the pandemic and uh, a bit of working with the gallery experience. And he told me that uh, since he opened the fair, he already had a lot of sales and he's selling large and small works, uh, different format, different prices, try to take different customer profiles so that he will not say no to anybody who wish to buy his art and I think it's clever and also as a young artist he needs to try and he did not have any professional training and he started uh, painting just a few years ago like uh, three years ago so he told me that during the pandemic he started uh, working with online galleries like online platforms like Artsy, Singular Art and he also works with um, actual galleries online like the gallery that who also sold online like in uh, Artnet and then he has uh, some problem like I mentioned Singular because it's one of this uh, Parisian local online platform that I heard a lot about and I asked him what is his experience and I shared with him uh, some uh, Chinese customers experience or let's say bad experience with Singular it was a uh, miscommunication like someone bought singular uh, works in, from China and then it was never shipped because the artist double sold the work the work was no longer available and he never received the communication and he thought it was a scam that he wanted to report to the police singular was a scam this and that but finally he realized it was just all of a misunderstanding and then he received a free artwork as a compensation he was a super big influencer so he was like making a buzz on the Chinese internet so I told Ruben this little story and he was like yeah like I had this a lot of this issues not only with singular but with other kind of uh, platforms because they don't tell me right away when my work is sold because they needed to process the payment uh, consolidate with the client to, to double check the addresses and different things so by the time they sent me the order it would be already three to five days or even a week would have passed and during the time my work could have been sold on another platform or with the actual gallery or the gallery sold it on another platform and this and that and this and that so yeah so it's uh you know it's not like art print or merchandise you can't just like 
magically make an artwork like that. And I think artists are facing this uh, channel conflicts in the post-pandemic art world. I say post-pandemic because people are receiving vaccines right now and hopefully before the summer we have a good herd immunity and the bans will be lifted. Let's just finger cross, hope so. And now we are entering officially the post-pandemic era and artist galleries are like, uh, you know, adapting to the new reality. Uh, they will continue to sell online. They will continue to uh, maintain their website, uh, mounting their web stores and having online offline art fairs as well. And now the challenge is, is to uh, find a way to juggle different balls because um, they have basically two businesses, online business and offline business, and they need to find a way to make the logistic work. If they can't find a good way to make things work, uh, you can end up having like the double booking, like one work is sold both online and offline, you would lose trust. Like this incident with the Chinese influencer, like we thought it was a scam because you know the works were never shipped and you give promises and then you cannot fulfill the promises because uh, you know you are sold here and there and you don't know which channel to prioritize. So it's a typical channel uh, conflicts and you know this kind of uh, channel management case. You know, maybe there are some startup companies, uh, if, if you know, let me know in the comment below, are uh, doing those kind of channel management. For example, if you run like Airbnb and you also run your own website and you run like a hotel, for example, this is uh, Petit Palace. And this used to be where Hybrid Art Fair was last year and the year before and the year before. This year is no longer here, it's in a bigger place. I'll be showing you as well. So like a hotel chain is having this channel conflicts as well because they can be booked from different channels and then they want to make sure they don't sell over the capacity because obviously they have this many rooms. The room cannot miraculously grow just because you want it to and I think this is the challenge for many artists and gallerists in the post-pandemic art world and when I came out of the Art Madrid I was super 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 hungry I went to the nearest restaurant uh, cafe and there was only one table left and I got it but there was like a lady that literally three seconds behind me she came three seconds too late and she didn't have the table so I said come over like if you don't mind we can share the table and I saw her batch because you know she's uh, ex bitter so I knew that she's probably uh, very exhausted and hungry like as well so we shared the table and we started a conversation and she had a really interesting project. She told me uh, she represents African artists only uh, in uh, her own gallery near Barcelona. So I had a small interview with her. So you can check out the timestamp below and check out uh, what she does. It's super interesting. And we made a rendezvous sometime in the summer. I'm going to come and visit her in her art gallery near Barcelona. And that was a very uh, lovely encounter. And this is the magic of the art fairs, I guess. You get to see people face to face. You get to make very meaningful and interesting contacts. So that's um, my impression of Art Madrid. I really need to go to the drawing room and I will be showing you what's happening there as well. So Ruben, you have the swimmers. Yes. Swimmers. And this is your art. Swimmers. I'm Ruben Abstract and uh, let me introduce you to Swimmers Collection. There is always in every artwork that I do, there's a swimmer that's swimming against the grain. And that is a message. Uh, the message behind that is that we normally tend to do what our uh, family expect from us or what our society expect from us. And we tend to follow the rest without knowing really where they are going. But there's always one in here. Let me just help you. In here, there is a swimmer that's going against the grain just over there. This I paint with enamel paint and uh, then I put epoxy resin. There's a wood panel and there's a, a first layer of uh, enamel paint. I actually paint the, the shadows of the swimmers. So it's not a, a natural shadow from the light here, but it's a, a let's say painted shadow. And then I put uh, epoxy resin, which needs to be dry, drying up for 20 days. And then I paint the last layer, which is basically the swimmers. And, and yeah, that, that's swimmers. Actually, I started painting, painting uh, just three and a half years ago uh, without knowing really 
uh, what I was going to do, but uh, I knew I was going to uh, start painting and I've never taken a painting lesson in my life. Never, never. So I just thought it a very straightforward surname uh, to just explain what I do. But what if you changed your mind and don't want to paint abstract anymore? Once I arrive to that situation, I will try to sort it out. But at the moment, I think I'm going to always be abstract. I believe I could be doing this for 40 more years. Why not? How old are you now? 46. Oh. So 86 is not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> My name is uh, Sorella Acosta and um, I'm the owner and also the director and the creator of the gallery Out of Africa Gallery. And we are here on, the, on Art Madrid Art Fair for the first time because we represent only contemporary African artists. And it's the first time that we present African artists in a global fair. Normally we participate in more fairs but for galleries who represent uh, African artists. Collectors, they normally Normally they collect art, but not African art. Yes. That's why it's also yeah, it's, it's uh, the first time. But now, because African contemporary art is going up, we can try to present this art to collectors. They are collecting other art. Yes. Um, when we started the gallery in 2013 in uh, Sitges, uh, the salt of Barcelona, uh, we had a lot of um, collectors also from Madrid, from Valencia, from Bilbao. But since the, um, the problems with the independence, uh, these people, they don't want to, to, to come to Barcelona. And that's why we decided to go to the collectors. <laughs> we say, okay, here in Madrid, you have a lot of uh, interesting collectors. When they, 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 uh, they meet us for the first time after that, they can follow us on Instagram, they can follow us on the website, and then we, we have contacts all the time. There are 35 galleries, I think not more, it's, it's a little fair. I prefer to participate in little fairs or medium fairs and two big fairs. Because uh, here, the collectors, they are coming, they see everything. Because it's not too big. When you go in a fair with 150 galleries at the end, <laughs> you don't look to the, to the works because it's too much. I, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I, I know also I'm, I'm happy that, we, all, that we, we can participate in fairs because last year it was only online. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's a pity. Our website uh, performs well, that's one thing. We are also on Artsy since five years and also we, we receive a lot of inquiries through Artsy and then we participate in one, two, three online fairs. Three online fairs during 2020, yes. And it was not bad for us, it was, it was okay. We, we had the same sales as in 2019, yes. Only with the online. But we, we, we worked a lot, but from, from our house. <laughs> and that's why for me communication is very important. You know, the, the gallery, the physical gallery is important too. To see the works and to present the works and to, organi to organize an, um, an opening. But the most important is the perseverance to communicate every day, every day, every day, every day. We, we, don't, uh, we didn't start in 2020 with the communication. We started at the beginning and we perform every year better and better with our website. With, with RC we are there since five years, since 2015 I think. And every year we, we do it better with them. We, don't, we, we didn't start in 2020 with the platform RC. No, because everything takes time to the fact that the collectors know, know you, that they are coming on your page, on our artsy, there are a lot of galleries, I don't know how much, but they, they, they have to know, know you and they have to know your artist. And you have to trust you. Yes, that's yes. why it's important. Wow, that's <laughs> very good forward thinking. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, sí, sí, gracias. Y, y tomates. Perfect, thank you. Thank Gracias. you. Perfect. Just so we can <laughs> start eating. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah.